JamesDillingPoll.com is his website. He joins us to the bottom of the hour. But I'm going to open the phones up again on world events for people. He is covering uh, right now the craziness going on in Paris, France for the next week or so. And that is the biggest gathering of world leaders ever. It's being billed. Lord Moncton's on, uh, what, tomorrow breaking this down with us. We have some other big guests tomorrow. I'm just going to leave that at that. And they're literally $1,000-a-plate caviar dinners, taxpayer paid for, jumbo jets, Israeli surveillance blimps, red carpets. And they're up there saying, we saved you from the terrorist. Now pass global government to, to deal with them. So they're conflating the terror attacks that they helped happen by bringing the refugees in and advertising it. Uh, you know, the world for jihadis to come in. They're almost all Sunnis that failed to take over Syria, now evacuating to Europe and the criminals that launched the attack. It's just unspeakable. And even mainline media admits they're trying to basically ratify the TPP without governments even having time to vote on it. So, so much is happening. They're also proposing an enforcement arm on speech if you deny man-made climate change. Notice it's climate change now the last few years, not, not global warming. And the thing is, it's so over the top what totalitarians they are. They're arresting conservative leaders in France that criticize open borders who lead in presidential polls like Marie Le Pen while with straight faces basically declaring civil emergency. So the left has openly become flaming tyrants. The right wing worldwide, I guess, either works with them or is scared of them. James Dillingpole joins us. Uh, what's going on with these people? Is it that they realize their constituents now support totalitarianism? Uh, what is the left going for? Because they really seem to be in a death orgy right now, trying to bring down the West in some bizarre temper tantrum that is discrediting them, but they don't seem to care. Uh, what's going on? Or, or, or do you think my analysis that they've gone completely insane is wrong? No, no they haven't gone insane. They were always insane. I think, I think, um, I don't know whether you're familiar with the name Maurice, Maurice Strong, the oh, Canadian yes. one world government guy who, who died a couple of days ago. And, and it, it passed almost unnoticed by the world's media. But I would argue that this is, this, that man is one of the most dangerous men of the 20th century because he was the guy who started the, who set the ball rolling with the Rio Earth Summit in 1992. That was the first big global climate summit. And you remember all the world leaders flew over there and they signed up to this thing called Agenda 21, uh, which, I'm, again, I'm sure that some of your listeners will be familiar with. Uh, and it is basically the blueprint for one world government. All these guys who turn up to these, uh, these meetings, they're essentially part of this massive UN apparatus, United Nations apparatus. Uh, they may not all be one world government freaks, but they are caught in this system which steers the world inexorably towards one world government. You, you think of all the, the different branches of the United Nations, from the United Nations Environment po Program to the World Health Organization, etc., etc. All these things use environmentalism as a way of increasing the global bureaucratic control of United Nations and similar bodies. So that is ultimately what it's about. It's got, it's got really very little to do with saving the planet. Uh, it's certainly got nothing to do with the science. The science and the global warming movement parted company a very long time ago. And by the way, I agree with your piercing analysis. Uh, every generation looks back at the last generation, Stalin, Hitler, Mao, and thinks crazy-eyed megalomaniacs rubbing their hands together on power trips belong to the last generation, and then we don't recognize our new crazed tyrants until we're halfway into the wood chipper. That's absolutely it. I, I think that we, because we've been programmed to think that, um, that, that evil men must wear jackboots, or they've got scars down their faces, or they've got white furry cats on their laps, we forget that a lot <laughs> of the most dangerous people in the world are... Uh, really want to do the right thing. I mean, I'm sure if you'd, if you'd met Morris Strong, I never did, but if you'd met him, I'm sure you'd have found him personally very charming. No, he was a true believer. He thought they were saving the earth, but of course putting yeah, themselves it, in power. Exactly. And uh, I, I mean, you look at, I don't know whether you've ever seen a, 
a nature TV documentary with, with David Attenborough. Um, he does BBC documentaries about polar bears and things. And he's a very well-loved figure, and he's a very, very nice man with a lovely, soft, whispery voice. But the problem is that some of the stuff he believes is, is really quite dangerous, that he, he believes that, that there are too many humans on the planet and that this is something we need to address and so on. Well, I don't think that there's, anything, that there's any room for that Malthusianism in, in, in the planet. It was wrong in, in the 18th century when Thomas Malthus was first espousing it, and it's wrong now. Human beings do far more good than bad to the planet, and we are not, as the Club of Rome once put it, the cancer. You remember that? And we certainly Earth don't want an elite group who decides who lives and who dies. Well, you're, you, uh, amen, bro. I'm, I'm certainly with you on that one. You do not want an unelected bureaucratic elite. Uh, who tend to swing left, unfortunately, anyway. Uh, I, I don't want these guys um, telling me what to do. I'd like to live my own life, thank you, free of that, that constraint. Well, plus they're such hypocrites. They have the biggest carbon footprints. They live like gods, um, beyond kings. And then they're telling the Africans you can't have air conditioning or a car. How about we're going to develop you know, high-tech cars and air conditioners for you? I mean, it's just, yeah. just such an arrogance. It's an elite club. You look, you look for example, at the one of the biggest charitable organizations in America, one of the most powerful, and I think one of the most dangerous, the Nature Conservancy. Um, Ted Turner, one of the richest men in America, he has brought up swathes of the American landscape uh, and sequestered it, made sure that it, it can never be developed for anything. It can never be used for sport. It can never be in, used for commercially exploited. That's, a, that's bits of America gone, which are now in the hands of this kind of unelected elite. You never voted for Ted Turner. You never, you never said, oh, well, hang on, Ted. Um, you, you never said to him, I know, Ted, I want you to put aside all that land and, and, and never allow any American to use it again. Uh, these guys are, <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry, I think they're evil, basically. I really do. Well, they are. You've been tracking this mega summit that they're billing as bigger than the Agenda 21 conference that Strong put on in 92. Is yeah. that hype or is this a big power grab? This is just, look, Paris in, in 2015 is the same as, as, as Cancun and when it, whenever it was, 2011, and Bali in 2014. I, mean, I forget the exact years. Lima, they always choose really nice places that, to, to go on these, on these jaunts. And they, the, the world leaders fly out um, in their private jets and, and, and the entourage uh, flies out and they all arrive by, by limo. And they, they build up these massive carbon footprints. And it, it, it becomes almost an end in itself. The elephant in the room, the reason that, the reason that, that there, will, there will be no really uh, binding agreement is, is China. China is the world's biggest, um, biggest uh, producer of, 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 of carbon dioxide. I mean, its, it's industry is, is massive. And the Chinese have no intention whatsoever of of um, stopping the, the economic growth, which the people want. I mean, the Chinese Communist Party does not want a, a revolution on its hands. And now the enters India. Want... They're telling India, though, you've got to make cuts, but China doesn't, and India's saying that's discriminatory. That's the whole point of this, isn't it? Picking winners and losers. Well, yeah, the, the Indians aren't going to buy it either. And, and this is the other thing. We, we in the West imagine that we call the shots. We don't anymore. India and China do. The developing world do. And, and they say... So, you're going to see this massive clash between between uh, between the, I suppose the east and the east and the west, and it's one we're not going to win because the Chinese aren't stupid. They're, I mean, they'll 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 play along with the green stuff to to, to uh, if they think it, they're going to get some money out of it. But behind the, door, the closed doors, they're going to carry on mining that coal and and belching out that carbon dioxide and and giving their people a, a an improved standard of living. And why not? Well, that's what frustrates me about India and China is they won't put in the clean plants. Then we put in plants so clean that nothing bad comes out but carbon dioxide and water. They list it as toxic waste and then just shut our plants down, suiciding the uh, U.K. steel industry, suiciding ours. This is crazy. Well, everything you say there is, is, is perfectly true. But you've got to remember that the Chinese... Uh, Industry is pretty much in the dark ages relative to Western industry. They haven't got the same technologies as us. They haven't got the same. But this is what you get when you have a sort of communist state. 
you don't get free, you don't get technological leaps, you don't get um, entrepreneurs.